Dear students, welcome to Accounting by ARD. Reading the question for you. On 1st April 2015, ARD rented a premises for 10,000 per annum. This means we have taken a premises on rent and the annual rent is per annum means annual. Payable on equal installment on 1st April, July, October and January. Uh, my dear students, the annual rent is 10,000 and this is paid on equal installment and there are four installments that need to be paid in a year. One is April, then July, then October and then January. So if there are four payments in a year and the total rent for per year amounts to 10,000. So if you divide 10,000 by four equal payments, this becomes 2,500 payment for per installment. Okay. For every three months we pay rent, for every quarter we pay rent worth $2,500. So how can we say that it is quarterly? This is because in, in a year there are 12 months and in 12 months we pay rent that is four times. Okay, If you divide four with the 12 months, this comes the time duration of three months. Right? For every three months we pay a rent. Okay, Mr. ARD's financial year ends on 30th November, that is our year ends on 30th November. Now, uh, we will be leaving this part, this is uh, some other requirement. What is the requirement? First of all, we need to prepare the rent account and then the rent receive account will be covering in the later part of the question. Let us solve for this. First of all, we need to make a rent account. So, as you may be aware, my dear students, rent is an expense. For, for expense, we need to make a PAAP account prepaid, accrued, accrued and prepaid. Okay, prepaid, accrued, accrued and prepaid. So, whenever we will be paying rents in this year, entry would be rent account would be debited and bank account would be credited. Why are we debiting rent account? Because rent is an expense for the business. And at the end of the year, we must be transferring this to an income statement. So what would be the entry? Entry would be rent account would be credited and income statement account would be debited. So my dear student, as you can see, we have uh, rented a premises on 1st April and our year ends on 30th November in this question. So if we count uh, from April towards November, how many months that it becomes? Uh, if we count April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So this becomes 8 months in all together. So this means in this year I have just uh, used the premises for 8 months and if I have used the premises for 8 months I will be paying rent for, uh, I will be using the rent, utilizing the rent for 8 months only. Therefore in an income statement I will be charging 8 months worth of rent. Okay. So if I divide uh, by 12, 10,000 divided by 12, this becomes monthly rent and rent per month is 833 and if we multiply it by 8 months, this would becomes April to November, this would becomes 667, okay. If 10,000 is the rent for whole of the year, in this year we will be only charging with 667 rent uh, out of the 10,000. Why? Because we have only used 8 months out of 12 months in this year. So income statement we have already found it and then let's go for accrued and prepayment. My dear students, uh, whenever we pay rent, we pay it for 3 months. So how did we get to know about this 3 months? Because in the year there are 12 months and we have paid uh, 4 installments in this year. So 12 divided by 4, this means we pay advance rent for every 3 months. First of all, we made a payment on 1st April if we count April, May, June. We have paid the rent on 1st April uh, relating to the period April, May, June. Then after June, we have paid rent on July, 1st July. We have paid it for again 3 months in advance, July, August and September. Then a uh, third rent that we have paid it on October and we have paid it for October, November and December. Now this is something that will interest us. Why? Because we have paid the rent for October, November and December but in the November our year ends. Okay. If our year ends on November but we have paid rent till December means we have paid one month rent in extra. Okay. If we have paid one month rent in extra that is excess rent we have paid this means this is a prepaid at the end of the year. So we will be writing here end 
uh, prepaid column. So we won't be writing prepaid, instead we will just be writing balance carried down. Okay. So how much is prepaid? Uh, if we have paid rent, that is uh, the total rent for the year is 10,000. If we divide it by 12 months, one month rent would become 833. We just need to find one month rent that is for December. There is another way to find monthly rent and that is if the rent for 3 months that is one quarter is 2500. If we divide this 2500 to 3 months, we again get the figure that is 833 per month. So this 833 becomes prepaid rent that is balance carried down. Okay. So the date that we'll be putting it at the end of the year that is 30th November. Okay. So these were the entries. Now let's come to the bank entries. My dear students, bank means uh, what amount of rents that we have paid in this particular year. In this year we have paid uh, uh, basically we need to pay four installment but we will be paying uh, April, July and October only in this year. Why? Because the January does not fall in this year. Why? Because the year ends in November. Okay. So if the year is ending in November, the January won't be coming in this year. Instead, now we will be seeing January in the next year. Why? Uh, why is January not included in this year? Because we have rented the premises after January. Okay. We have rented it on April. This means the January rent won't be paid in this year now. Okay. So after we have taken the premises on rent, we have paid three installment. One is 1st April, that is 2500. Then on 1st July, we have another rent payment that is 2500. The entry that I would be making is rent account would be debited and bank account would be credited. And the third installment that I have paid this year is on 1st October rent debit and bank credit. So why I'm not including January because in uh, during April and November, during April to November turnover that is these eight months, we have just paid made this three payments and we have not paid for January, we will be paying it for January in the next accounting period. Now there are three payments, let us uh, close this account and if we add up both of the sides, both of the sides are equal in this question. Why? Because everything is given, we just need to balance this account. If the account does not balance, this means there is a balance carried down or income statement value that is missing. In this question, everything is available, therefore nothing is missing. And this balance carried down becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period. Okay, This balance carried down is prepaid closing. This would become prepaid opening. So this would be after November, there comes 1st December, this would be balance BD 833. Uh, now let me explain to you what we just did. Actually what we are doing, we are paying rent uh, for 3 months at once in advance. Okay, so if I made, if I have made 3 payments for 3 months each, if I multiply 3 times 3, this becomes 9 months. I have paid 9 months rent in this year. But I have just utilized, I have just used 8 months out of them. So out of the 9 months payment that I have made, 7500, only 8 months rent have been utilized in this year, that is 667. And the rent that I have not utilized in this year, it is an asset for the business and we will be using this prepaid in the next accounting period. So if I will be making a statement of financial position that is a balance sheet, I will be using 833 in the current asset column with the name of other receivables. Okay, If I have paid rent in advance but I have not utilized that rent yet, I will be utilizing it in the later part of the year. Therefore, it is an asset for me. So I will be using it in the next year basically. We won't be using it in this year, we will be using it in the next year. So I hope you got the concepts behind an expense account. Now let us discuss income account. Let us discuss income account again. My dear students, we are studying accruals and prepayments. We just understood how to make an expense account. Uh, now, uh, as there are two scenarios in an expense, whether expense is an accrual or whether expense is prepaid, there can be two scenarios in an income as well. An income can be accrued or an income can be prepaid. Now, what does this mean? Uh, there are two types of income, expenses, uh, income can be accrued or it can be prepaid. Income is accrued when income is earned but not received yet. 
what does this mean this means we have provided services to our customers but our customers has not yet paid us for the amount that they owe to us therefore it is an accrued income at and it is an asset for the business okay because we have provided them the services but uh, they have not yet paid for the services this can be the case that you have studied for whole month but you haven't yet paid for your city school chalan if you have not paid for your school chalan this means for school it is an asset okay for school it is an asset because it is an accrued income school has earned this income but school has not received the payment from your parents therefore it is an asset for the school it is a receivable for the school now what about the prepaid income prepaid income is income received but not earned yet for example uh, the city you have paid uh, school chalan uh, before the month has ended okay at the start of the month uh, as soon as you receive the chalan you paid it immediately and you have not yet uh, uh, attended all the classes because you have not yet utilized the services and but uh, still you have paid for the chalan then this what does school mean school have received this payment but school has not yet uh, provided you the services that they have actually promised you okay so income is received by school but they have not earned it when will they actually earn this when they will actually teach you when they will uh, provide you classes when they will provide you learning then uh, is the time they have actually earned this income so therefore the advance that the school have received the uh, fees that school have received in advance it is basically a liability for the school okay so uh, let me help you explain you with one more example and the example is that you have a premises uh, and you gave me uh, that premises on rent okay you have a premises that is vacant you are no longer using it and i am looking for a premises and you have gave me this premises on rent so there can be two scenarios one scenario is that that uh, i do not have money right now and i have uh, requested you to please give me that place uh, and i'll be paying you after 3 months so i have utilized your premises for 3 months but i have not yet paid for this yet so th therefore it is an accrued expense for me and it is a current liability for me because i have utilized your premises but i have not yet paid for but i'll be paying it for it in the near future therefore it is a liability for me and for you it is not an accrued expense for you it is an accrued income why because you have earned this you have given me the premises for 3 months you have earned this income but you have not received it so therefore it is a receivable for your side and it is a current asset for you okay now let us uh, move this scenario further and what happens that i have taken the premises from you and for example the annual rent is $1000 and for the year Uh, sorry, uh, the monthly rent is one thousand dollar, and for the whole year, the total rent becomes twelve thousand. So what I did, I just gave you twelve thousand dollar check, and I have given you rent in advance for the whole year. Okay, so uh, the advance that I have uh, gave you for whole year, it is a prepaid expense for me. I have paid for expense, but I have not yet utilized your premises. Therefore, uh, it is an asset for me that I will be using this asset in the future periods. In the future, I will be using your premises, but I need not pay the rent because I have already paid it in advance. Uh, and uh, the the amount that is prepaid expense for me, that is asset, it is a prepaid income for you. Uh, what does this mean? This mean you have received the rent for the whole year. And for example, after one month, you say that, sir, my father. Uh, wants to sell this premises can you please vacant this for us so i'll be saying you that uh, of course this is your premises you can do whatever uh, you want with this premises but just as to remind you that you have taken the rent for the whole year kindly return my 11 months rent for example if i have used it already for one month so the amount that you have received you have not earned it this is a liability for you and this should remain a liability until and unless the whole year have been passed so let us uh, move forward and see how does how does we can make an income account uh, an income account my dear students is in and is an exact opposite of an expense account okay it is an exact opposite of an expense account for an expense account we use the word uh, mnemonic p w a p it was prepaid accrued accrued and prepaid for an income account it is an opposite we will be using a p p a appa account 
accrued, prepaid, prepaid and accrued. Again, we won't be writing accrued and prepaid in the question. Instead, we'll be writing uh, balance brought down and balance carried down. This APPA is just for you to remember so that you may not write this in on the wrong side. Okay. This is accrued balance brought down. This is accrued balance carried down. So the question here arises, sir, why does the accrued balance brought down come on the debit side? Beta accrued balance brought down is an uh, accrued is basically accrued income is an asset for you. Now we have just studied this. You may see accrued income is an asset. Okay. An asset always comes on the debit side. Okay. And prepaid income is a liability. Therefore, liability always comes on the credit side. If the opening accrued, uh, if, if an opening asset is coming on the debit side, then the closing asset should come on the credit side. And uh, similarly, if an opening liability comes on the credit side, the closing should come on the debit side. Now, whenever we receive income, the entry would be bank account would be debited and income account would be credited. Bank account would be debited and income account would be credited. And uh, what happens if we want to transfer it to income statement, the entry would be income account would be debited and income statement would be credited. So, my dear students, uh, income account is basically credit in nature, but what happens at the end of the year, we want to close this account and we need to transfer it to an income statement. So, the entry would be, for example, rent received or fees received would be debit and income statement would be credited. So, when we are done doing this, uh, let us uh, solve the question and let us see. Okay, now we are making an income account. If you can see the question, the question now says in the second paragraph, if you can read the question, on 1st May, AID realized that the premises were larger than required and sublet part of it to a tenant for an annual rent of 6000 now what happens, we are Mr. AID, we rented the premises ourselves for 10,000 and for example, half of the place, half of the premises were rented, we sublet it to someone else, okay, for 6,000. Now if we are letting it to someone else, this 6,000 is basically income for us and we need to uh, make a rent receive account, that is we need to make an income account. Now let us make an income account as you may be aware my dear student for income we use the mnemonic APPA. Now what happens the item that used to be debited in a rent account would be credited now in a rent receive account and the items that you, we used to credit in an expense account now would come on the debit side in an income account. This is basically a mirror image of this. This is basically the exact opposite. Now, whenever we are receiving rent from our tenants, the entry would be bank account would be debited and rent receive account would be credited. Now, what happens at the end of the year, as you may be aware that rent receive is basically credit in nature, but at the end of the year, we'll be debiting rent receive account and transferring it to an income statement. Okay. So, what happens, we have given the premises, uh, half of the premises maybe or some part of the premises to our tenant for 6,000 annual rent. Although the annual rent is 6,000 but as you can see, we have uh, rented, uh, we have given our premises on rent on 1st May. At the end of the year, is still 30th November. If we count from May till November, how many months that it would uh, become? Uh, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. This would become 7 months. So, uh, previously there were 8 months, why? Because we have uh, ourselves rented the premises, the place on 1st April and after 1 month, uh, that is 1st May, we gave the premises to someone else on rent, okay? So, the expense in this year was for 8 months but the income in this year was only 7 months, okay? If the annual rent that we can receive is 6000, so, what would be the rent for 7 months? If we divide uh, 6000 by 12 months, this would become 500 for per month. If we multiply it by 7, this would become 3500 for the 7 months in this year. Okay. So, whenever we will be making income statement in this year, we will be just be writing rent uh, income that is rent received 3500 in other income section. Okay. So, let us do the bank entries first. If you can see the question. The tenant has committed to pay the rent on May, August, November and February. Now the tenant already knew that we 
are paying the rent in four installments so the tenant has also asked us uh, so that he can pay the rent in four installment rather than paying uh, the whole year rent in lump sum so therefore we allowed the tenant to pay the rent in four installment okay so if that annual rent is 6000 and if we divide it by four equal installment that uh, for each installment that is the quarterly rent that we will be receiving would be 1500 okay so we have uh, received four installment but in this year we will be just receiving may august and november we won't be receiving february why because we have uh, given the premises uh, on first may and the year ends on november now if you uh, see the tenure between may and november the months that will lie in between would be May and August and November and not the February. Uh, the February would be come, coming in the next accounting period, not in this year. Okay. So we will just be writing three payments. I will just be receiving three payments in this year. Uh, this would be three payments, 1500 times three. Okay. Now let us see what about the accrued and prepayment. My dear students, as you may be aware, there are 12 months in a year and in one year we are receiving basically four installments in any particular year we are receiving four installments so if we divide four uh, by 12 months this will become three months for each installment we are receiving rent for three months okay we are receiving it in advance on first may we are uh, receiving rent for may june july then after july we have received rent on august for august september and october and after october there comes november December and January we have received rent for November December and January this is important for us because in the November our year ends and we have received rent for the next financial year for the months of December and January okay if we have received rent for December and January as well that is for the next year these are prepaid income okay these are two months of prepaid income now the question here arises what would be the amount for prepaid for two months Firstly, we need to find monthly rent. Uh, if we divide 6000 by 12 months, uh, we would be getting one month rent that is 500. There is alternate method to uh, calculate one month rent. That is if we divide 1500 by 3 months, this would become monthly rent would be 500. Now, if monthly rent is 500, we need to multiply it by 2 months. Why? We need to find rent for December and January. Okay. The extra rent or the excess rent we have received would be prepaid at the end of the year so we'll be writing in the place of prepaid and we won't be writing prepaid we'll just be writing balance carried down or balance brought down now at the end of the year is 30th november 2015 now as you can see both of the sides have been balanced my dear student what did happen uh, the the scenario is that that we received the rent for three months in advance and in this year we have basically received three payments okay 1500 3 months 3 months 3 months if you multiply 3 times 3 this should become 9 months we have basically received 9 months rent from a tenant and out of this 9 months we have just utilized rent for we have just uh, earned the income for 7 months means our tenant has just utilized this premises for 7 months this year but instead he have paid us rent for 9 months so the 2 months extra rent that he have paid is not for this year this should belong to the next accounting period this is basically a liability for the business we have received the rent but we have just uh, not earned it okay we have received it in advance therefore it is a liability for the business now this balance carried down my dear students will become balance brought down uh, so we'll be writing balance brought down to this after november there comes december so this balance brought down is basically liability for the business and if we are making a statement of financial position that is balance sheet we will be using it in the current liability section with the name of other payables. I hope you understood the concepts behind accruals and prepayments.